reading to you from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and the 58th verse. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic, gave my heart to Christ over 55 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. One year later, God called me to preach. My stars, I wished you folks would have been with me and my wife Sunday. There was either 12 or 15, I can't remember, men gave their hearts to Christ. And then I told them, I said, men, I said, I'm going into surgery Tuesday. I wished you'd remember me in prayer and they got up from their chairs, came over and surrounded me, joined hands, and they prayed for me. Oh, friends, that was a moving experience. You know, people say, oh, they don't pray. Hey, listen, they, some of those people love the Lord a lot more than those who profess to be Christians on the outside, I'll tell you. Well, the operation went well. I'm still <clears throat> hurting, but praise God I got through it. Thanks to you dear ones that prayed for me. My, I tell you, the dowels ought to build a little altar over there. Those folks just prayed for me, and I just don't know how I could ever thank them. Well, friends, I'll be with you for half an hour tonight. Won't you kick off your slippers, sit back and relax, pour your glass of iced tea or a cup of coffee. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? Friends, if you have your Bibles, will you turn with me to Luke, the first chapter, <clears throat> and let's begin reading the 26th verse. And in a sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin and spouse to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. <clears throat> and when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him <clears throat> the throne of his father's David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, <clears throat> The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word, and the angel departed from her. This is called Mary's Discoveries. Friends, from Malachi to Matthew, there was a quiet time. And then, my stars in the morning, there was a flurry of angelic activity. The world enters a time of swift prophetic fulfillment. And the appearance of Gabriel to Mary. Now, this takes place in Galilee, in this city of Nazareth, verse 26. It says, And in the sixth month, the angel Abel, Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Well, <clears throat> Mary is away, Mary is a virgin waiting to get married to Joseph, verse 27. To a virgin, a spouse, to a man whose name was Joseph 
of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. You know, friends, how many people I've had come to me and say, Ah, Cecil, are you trying to stuff this down my throat? No, I'm not trying to stuff it down your throat. I'm trying to tell you the truth. This is exactly what happened. Now, had it not happened, it had been prophesied for years. Had it not happened, then it would have been a, a fraud. It did happen. Well, what Mary discovered in this encounter with the angel, she discovered that God plans are eternal. Hey, I come back on that song when I wrote, God had a plan. Oh, beloved, he has a plan for you. You say, well, I'm sure no Mary. Well, that's all right. God has a place for you in this world. And you know, dear friends, that's what I tell those inmates in prison. Now, they've done some terrible things. Sure they have. Well, they wouldn't be in prison. Do I, do I try to soft coat it? No, I don't. I tell them the truth. But I also tell them that this Christ that died on Calvary died for them as well as for me and you. Yes, he did. Now, I was an alcoholic. You might have been nothing but a self-righteous lost person. Like some people I know that never thought they were sinners. But the Bible tells me that you and I, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, she had a dream like those of other young women. She would someday find the right man and marry. Hey, that's good. That's right. She would have children and a home of her own. Friends, listen. Perhaps one of her children would be important. Oh, boy. Gabriel's surprising message. She had found favor with God. Now, let, let's stop right there just for a moment. There's a, the Catholics, they, and I'm not knocking them, I'm just telling you what they say. They believe that if they want something, they go through Mary and get to Jesus. That is not so. You go to Jesus, not to Mary. Mary was a sinner, just like you and I were. That's right. But she had found favor with God. I don't completely understand that, but it, it's what it says. Verse 28. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Hey, friends, could I just back off here just for a moment? You know, I've been praying for this operation. Lord, make this a walk through the park. Oh, friends, that's exactly what it was. I had no fear whatsoever. Hey, listen, fear is common to man. It sure is. But you know, when the Lord says what he said to her, fear not. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Just, if he tells you, fear not. I was telling someone the other day what happened to me. The first service I ever preached in my first church. I was scared to death. And we had a deacon. I guess I was whiter than white. I guess this deacon, he saw it. And he said, Brother Mo, are you, are you scared? I said, I'm so scared. I can't even think. He said, well, come on. And he said, you come with me at these two Sunday school uh, teachers, uh, let's go back in, in the room and find power. And that dear old half-breed Indian fell on his knees and he, he began to pray and Cecil began to cry. Oh, he said, Lord, this is just a young baby Christian. Three years a Christian, here he is preaching the gospel. A converted alcoholic, don't know his left foot from his right foot. Three-word vocabulary, do, do, and do. And here he is this morning proclaiming the good news of salvation. Father, help this young, struggling preacher. And you know what I got? A still, small voice said, Fear not, 
for I am with thee. That's what he told me just before I went under uh, anesthetic the other night. Fear not, for I am with thee. Oh, he said, I have many, many, many of my children around the world praying for you. You'll be all right because you're in the arms of Jesus. Oh, friends. Well, in the verse 31, it says she would conceive before marriage, verse 31. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call him Jesus. Not a higher power, but Jesus. Her son would be called the son of the highest, verse 32. And he shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. He would be a king and reign how long? For a week? Six months? Three terms? Reign forever. Verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. See, you know, we're so, we're so human. We know that their time begins and time ends. That the minute, the minute you and I were born, we started to die. That's right. And when the time comes, he'll take us home. That is, that is for those who have repented of their sins and invited Christ in. Friends, you can't get into your, you can't get into heaven by just belonging to a church. I know there's some, not all churches, but some churches teach that. In fact, some churches say we're the only true church. In fact, I know several denominations that make that brash statement, which is a lie out of hell. But when we are born again and our name is written in the Lamb Book of Life and, and he said he would give us the assurance, it says in 1 John 5, 50, 5, 18, or what is it? 5, what anyway, 5, there one thing, 5, 18. Well, whatever. It says, this is written that you may know that you have passed from death unto life. He didn't say, well, I think you think so. Well, maybe I plan on it. No, no. You shall know. And that word know is pretty, pretty straight, isn't it? See, God works on a forever basis, not a temporary basis. <clears throat> but we should make our plans with eternity's value in view. See, Mary discovered that God's promises are unfailing. Look at verse 32 and 3. And he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there shall be no end. My, my. Boy. Mary must have been familiar with promises about the Messiah. I'm sure she was. But someday, God would send the one to rule on David's throne. Verse 32. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. You know, friend, it's pretty hard for me to understand a man that never did anything wrong was tempted just like you and I every day. But he said not. Now, God cannot look upon sin. So he had to have a sin offering to appease God for the sins of the world. And Jesus did that. Now, when he went to the cross, when they nailed him on the cross, he was, in fact, sinless. But now, he has all the sins of this world on his shoulder. The people that was crucifying him, he was had their sins on his shoulder. And he was dying for them, the ones that was killing him. He was born of a virgin, Isaiah 7, 14, it says. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall be called, his name shall be called Emmanuel. Well, but centuries have passed without these promises being fulfilled. Now, Gabriel 
revealed, she will give birth to the promised one. Uh, we have one uh, a man that's on, on Fox that calls the president the anointed one. Of course, he's not, but that's what they say. Verse 33, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of this kingdom there shall be no end. Well, <clears throat> you know, Mary discovered that God's power is completely unlimited. I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what your needs are. I don't know if you're losing your home. I don't know if you're losing your job. I don't know if they're going to tell you today you have an inoperable cancer. I'm not, I don't know what you're facing, but I do know this. Nothing is impossible with God. Verse 37. For with God, nothing is impossible. Well, <clears throat> how shall these things be? Verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not man? Well, can't you imagine what a shock that was? My stars, all of a sudden she's told she's going to have a baby and she's not been with man. This isn't going to happen, is it? It did happen. Now you say, oh, I don't believe it. Well, I feel sorry for you. You know what? <clears throat> uh, are you one of these pick and choose Christians? Pick what you like and choose what you like and denounce what you don't like? Hey, let me tell you what. You can read this book from kiver to kiver, and you can read something there that kind of relates to you just a little bit. Well, you find yourself hurrying over that scripture to something else. Because we don't like to know that we're not perfect. And if you say you're perfect, you're a liar and a truth's not in you. If you say you've not sinned, John, 1 John said you are a liar and a truth is not in you. Well, maybe that's why I'm glad, and I'm not, I hate to say that, but maybe that's why I'm glad I was an alcoholic, because I sure knew I was a sinner. Oh, yes, I did. And you know what? My mama, she used to read the Bible to me and my sister. And she there was a picture. I've still got this old family Bible here in my studio. And uh, there's a picture of Jesus holding that little lamb in his arms. Well, we raised sheep. We had hundreds of sheep. And there's nothing nor sweeter than a little lamb. That's why God refers to Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Well, you see, Mary's really confused. I don't know how this is going to happen. Well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been under anesthesia? Well, it's a funny, strange thing. I asked <laughs> the anesthesiologist, I said, are you going to give me a woo-woo pill? She said, what's a woo-woo pill? Well, I said, when you give it, you go, woo-woo. She said, no, I'm not going to give it to you. It's going to be in your drip. Now, she said... Cecil, there's going to be a burning in your arm, and uh, when that burn hits, you're good night. It never came, but they said good night anyway. And pretty soon I wake up in a recovery room, happier than a dead pig in the sunshine, knowing full well I had some wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ who were praying for me. Oh, my stars in the morning, friends. If, if you don't get nothing from this message, remember, prayer is the most important tool you and I have in our toolbox. Everything fails, you can pray. They tell us, they tell our kids, you can't pray in school. You can't stop me from praying. I don't have to shut my eyes. I don't have to kneel on my knees to pray. I can pray looking you straight eyeball to eyeball. No, you can't stop a Christian from praying. No matter how they try it. You remember what they did to Daniel after they issued that decree that he hasn't to prayed to, to nobody but the king? What did Daniel do? A little show off. He goes back to his house, pulls the curtain back, sits, sits in front, kneels in front of this great big old plate glass window, kneels three times toward Jerusalem and prays. Well, that cost him a night with the lions. Now, when he was in that lion den, here's what he did. He said, come over here, Mr. Lion. I don't have a pillow, and I want to use your mane. And he laid on that mane, slept like a baby. Oh, friends, 
God is a big God. And God has already proven his power in Elizabeth, verse 36. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. Well, again, with God all things are possible. What good news for our troubled time. What a faith builder for prayer. See, Mary discoveries are demonstrated in the gospel. God's plan are eternal. What was it? The cross. God's promises were unfaithful, unfa unfaithful, unfailing, the resurrection. And God's power is unlimited, new birth to those who believe. Let me ask you, would you make Mary's discoveries personal? Receive Christ as your Savior and Lord without delay. Trust Him to care for the problems that trouble you today. Oh, friends, listen. You say, Cecil, I don't know if I know Jesus. I know I go to church and I pray and I read my Bible. That doesn't assure you anything. The only assurance that you have that you're going to heaven, if you've confessed to the Lord that you are a sinner, and the Bible said we've all sinned, and ask Him to forgive you and to come into your heart. And he said, I'll no wise cast you out. He's standing right now with outstretched arms saying, Come unto me all ye labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you peace. Well, friends, listen. If the Holy Spirit of God is tugging at your heart, the, I want you to bow your head at me right now. And don't pray this, dear friend, if you don't mean it. And here's how the prayer goes. Kind Heavenly Father, in Jesus' precious name, Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm opening my heart right now and inviting you in to be my personal, personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, I wish you'd get on the phone and call me. 303-471-8534. I'll not use your name on the air. I'll not embarrass you. I'll not sit down right and ask you for any money. I'm only concerned where you spend an eternity, not where you go to church. <clears throat> if you can't afford this call, won't you call me collect? I'll accept the charge. Oh, friends, I tell you, God loves you tonight. <clears throat> that was a miracle. <clears throat> what he did for Jesus, for Mary. And you and I have a Savior because of Mary's faithfulness. Though she was a sinner, she found favor with God. Well, friends, I'm standing by my phone right now, 303-471-8534. Again, if you can't afford to call, call me collect. I'll accept the charge. Well, friends, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Moe. I want to thank you so much for listening. I know I'm a fumbling, stumbling old preacher, but boy, boy, I know Jesus. And that's what I'm trying to put to you, Jesus. Come with your sins. Come with your broken hearts. God loves you. He knows how we hurt sometimes. He sure does. But... Peter said, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Again, my dear friends, I want to thank you. I don't, I just don't know how to repay you for your kindness, for praying for me. Oh, my stars, there was Millie and Marie, and there was May, and there was uh, Betty and Bud, and, and there was uh, Diane and Mary. Oh, my stars, thank you. Beloved, I sure love you all. Well, until this time next Sunday night, I want you to be good to your neighbors. Stay sweet. Keep looking up. Oh, this wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night and may God bless you real, real good.